hi guys welcome and welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to recreate the middle dress and i made the ones on the left and the right for my sister it was her birthday on the 5th of may and as you can see i made a mistake around the hip area i'm going to be showing you how to correct that and yeah basically that's what this video is about it's a tutorial on how to make the dress so if that's something like you're interested in seeing definitely keep watching it promises to be another fun and detailed tutorial I start off by making a basic bodice for my sister and if you don't know how to make your basic bodice check out the video that I've linked in the iCards above as well as in the description bar below. It's a video where I show you how to make a basic bodice from start to finish, the measurements you require and how to draft the basic bodice. So please check it out if you don't know how to make a basic bodice. But at this point all I am doing is just drafting a basic bodice and I didn't go into details like I said because I have a detailed tutorial on it. right after drafting the basic bodice i went on to draft the basic skirt block and if you don't know how to draft a skirt block go ahead and check out the video that i've linked in the icard above as well as in the description bar below i show you how to draft a basic skirt block and also how to make it a, pe a pegged or pencil skirt however for this video you really don't need a pencil skirt or a pegged skirt effect that was the mistake that i made i made mine a pegged skirt by shaping the um, bottom bit and i shouldn't have done that so I'm going to go ahead and insert a clip explaining what I should have done and the mistake that I made in details but like I said because you have it you want it to be ruched you do not need to do like any shaping at the bottom I shouldn't have made it pegged I should have just left it as a straight block or even slightly a line if possible before we move on I asked in the community tab the mistake that I made and people were able to identify it. It was because there was not enough fabric around the hip area so the ruching wasn't done properly. However, some of you also said that the hole at the, around the chest or the keyhole was too small. That was absolutely intentional. That was not a mistake. However, in this video or in this clip, I'm going to quickly explain the mistake that I made and how to avoid that real quick. In case you don't know, this is what a straight skirt block looks like before shaping, before adding the peg effect and this is what I should have worked with. But what I went ahead to do and that was my mistake was that I'm going to show you right now with a red marker. I went ahead to do a pegged effect which is what I'm doing right now. I'm making it pegged or making it pencil. So that means I'm making it fitted around you know the tie area which was the biggest mistake that I, sh I made and I realized way too late. So if you don't know how to do this check out the video that I have on how to make a pencil skirt. I explained this in details in the beginning and I'll put a link in the iCard above as well and description as well as in description bar below. So basically when when you make something pegged or pencil you're basically making it fitted and taking away some fabric and you don't need that you remember that the fabric is not even enough to get the rigid effect so you taking away some of it obviously makes it tighter and definitely impossible to have achieve any form of ruching so go ahead and cut out along the straight block so basically you're not cutting out the peg skirt area which is the red marker rather you're cutting out the black lines or the black marker lines so that you're basically just cutting out a straight skirt block so as you can see i didn't i ignored the um, pencil shaping completely and i just cut out my straight skirt block as it should be so if you do decide to go ahead with the straight skirt block you would expect that there will be no ruching around the hip area and that's because the hip area was made to fit it's actually perfect and precise so there's little or no allowance at all however you will have some form of ruching around the tie area so what i suggest is the slash and spread method and basically what you have to do is you just need to draw a line straight down from the dart and just take it all the way to the hem and then after that you want to go ahead and cut through this line after cutting through the line that has been drawn from the hem to the dart point, you'll notice that the pattern does not lay flat on the fabric. So the way to correct this is that you'll need to cut away the darts. So go ahead and cut the dart away. 
being careful not to cut through the paper totally you want it basically just hanging by whatever string you can hang by so as you can see my paper has not been cut through yet i accidentally cut through it eventually but that's because it was only hanging by a little bit of a thread so go ahead and pin the paper to your fabric and at this point this is what we call the slash and spread method you have absolute control over how wide you want to spread it whether you want to close the dart a little bit and open up the hem area or whether you want to close the dart completely and open up the hem area completely but absolutely it is up to you so in this first method i'll be showing you what i did was that i opened up the dart a little bit and then i opened up the hem area a little bit and this is what it will look like so you go ahead and mark your hem area and mark your side seam area with the allowance that you were using and then mark the waist area and mark the hem area however should you want to close the dark completely that is still an option the skirt will still match it will still match you know the body's area so don't worry about it so you can go ahead and close the dark completely just like that and then you have a wider area to reach as you can see it opens up wider around the hem and then a little bit around the hip area so this is still an option whatever way you want to use or whatever method you want to you want to use works absolutely well after deciding all you need to do is mark out the sewing allowance around the side seam the waist and the hem region after making your bodice you'll notice that the dart on the bodice and the dart on the skirt do not meet so starting with the front piece we're going to correct that and what you want to do essentially is that you want to you want to um, pin or you want to pair both pieces together so with my paper tape i'm going ahead to pin and pair the pieces together making sure that the center front start around the same point and then i'm going to go ahead and use the paper tape to just you know bring the pieces together around the waist region remember that they both have a waistline so you basically just want to paper tape it together until you get to the side seam at the side seam you will notice that it doesn't meet together so what i always do is i just add a little bit of paper beneath it like i'm doing right about now and then after doing that i'm going to go ahead and shape it so that we can make it meet After joining the bodice to the skirt, like I said earlier, you need to place a piece of paper, a small piece of paper around the side seam area where the waist area does not meet. After doing that, it is now time to shape in the waist area around the side seam. And the best way to do that is by the aid of a French curve or any curved ruler. So you basically place your curved ruler around the side seam area and ensure that the curve that you draw touches both the bodice and the skirt piece. When you're happy with the result, cut out the excess. Right now, you would have this um, pattern looking like this. The next thing to draw is to draw in the new waistline. And the new waistline is drawn with a biro or any marker that is bold. And it's drawn exactly where the skirt piece meets the body piece. So after drawing the new waistline, you need to measure out the new waistline. And what I have on the new waistline in this case is 24.7 so now we're going to go ahead and move into the calculation to find our new dart placement to calculate the new dart you need to measure the new waistline and like i said the new waistline is where the bodice meets the um skirt pattern around the waist and like i said you know you'll need to mark that out with a pen or a marker so that it's bold so calculate the new waistline or measure the new waistline rather and label it as x and in this case x is 24.7 after that you need to calculate the new dart the new dart is calculated as x minus a quarter of the actual waist and in this case the actual waist is 81 centimeters where x is 24.7 and the actual waist a quarter of the actual waist is 20.25 so by the time you do the math, you have the new dart measurement as 4.45. To draw in the new dart, mark half the bust band measurement starting from the center front going towards the waist. Mark it on the waistline, on the new waistline, just like I'm doing right now. Afterwards, you need to take the dart value and to find half of it. So mark half of the dart value towards the left-hand side of that bust band measurement and another half towards the right-hand side of that bust band measurement. 
after doing that, you need to connect the new dart lines or dart legs towards the bust point measurement on the bodice, and then you need to connect it down as shown. So to connect the darts towards the skirt, you need to square down the mid dart point. So where we have the middle of the dart, square down that point as shown. Make sure it's the same length as the previous dart and then go ahead and connect the dart legs just like that. And we are done with shaping the dart. As you can see, the darts now match. So you can go ahead and erase the previous darts that were drawn with pencil. And now you know that you have just that dart on the skirt and on the bodies and they meet perfectly so i'm going to go ahead and show you guys again how to do this with the back back pieces so i've got the back bodies and the back skirt and the first thing you need to do is starting from the center back you need to go ahead and join these pieces together with your paper tape or your masking tape After joining the bodice to the skirt around the waist, you'll notice that they don't meet around the side seam area and that's absolutely normal. So go ahead and place your piece of paper underneath it and then hold it together with your masking tape or paper tape and then go ahead and do the shaping. Again, to do the shaping, you need a curved object. So I'm going ahead to use my French curve. As you can see, they don't meet. While it's very slight, they don't meet. So I'm going ahead to use my French curve so that I can show you guys how to do that. But you can see how small it is that they don't meet. Very, very, you know, very, very minute. So like I said, go ahead and, you know, put that together properly and then get your French curve or your curved ruler. And then with the curved ruler, draw a curved line so that the bodice meets this um, skirt part. After that, cut off the curved area and then go ahead and draw the new waistline. So the new waistline will be the exact point where the bodice waist meets the skirt waist. And then you want to measure the new waistline and mark it as X. So in this case, it's 24.7 again. And that's ju that just shows that it's correct because you should have the same thing for the front and then for the back. Go ahead and apply the formula that I taught you where X minus a quarter of the waist measurement gives us the new dart value and new dart value in this case is 4.45 so using the previous um, midpoints that we have on the bodies i've gone ahead to draw the dart and i'm just basically going to follow the same method that i explained while we're doing for the front so go ahead and draw the new dart and then you know erase the old dart and you are good to go after drawing the new dart and you're happy with the result, go ahead and separate the bodies from the skirt exactly at the waist area. So in this case, we need to do that because we're doing two separate pieces. We're having a bodice piece and then a skirt piece. So go ahead and separate it by cutting through exactly where the new waistline is. So starting with the skirt piece, we're going to go ahead and cut out our skirt piece. Now it's important that I mention again that I made a mistake in my own and your skirt should have had some form of slash and spread so that you can give it some volume and you know avoid and have a lot of ruching. But like I said, I didn't do that. So I'm just going to show you what to do when you've corrected that mistake that I made. So basically at this point, I would expect that you've done your slash and spread on your skirt and your skirt has more volume than this. Go ahead and pin the center front of the skirt to your paper, making sure the center front aligns with the center front of the fabric. You also want to make sure that you give your, your skirt some room in terms of the length because ruching will take away some length. So I advise that you add a minimum of about five inches to the length of your skirt and then you go ahead and spread it as it should be and pin it in place so whether you decide to close the dart completely or you decide to leave some dart is absolutely up to you and it's both fine both methods or both ways are fine after pinning your slash and spread piece onto the skirt or onto the fabric rather go ahead and mark out the sewing allowance and the sewing allowance i used is one and a half inches around the side seam area half an inch around the waist area and about five or six inches around the hem area like i said this is important because to for ruching you need volume at the side and you also need volume around the length area so go ahead and cut out the skirt piece for the front as well as the back. And after doing that, you also need to cut out the lining pieces as well.
just a quick reminder to remind you to you know do the slash and spread on the back piece as well so that you can have you know the desired routine that you want on all your pieces so make sure you're not like me and make sure you do that After cutting out the front and the back skirt pieces, go ahead and cut out four strips of fabric that are one and a half inches wide and about 45 inches long. So you might not need as much as 45 inches in length, but it's better to have it really long. And these are the strips that will go inside the reaching area. So go ahead and pipe the strips as shown. When it comes to cutting the lining piece, I do not recommend that your lining is anything longer than 15 to 17 inches. And I say 17 inches by the time you take account into the fact that you'll be hemming the lining and possibly joining the lining to the bodies around the waist region. So keeping it at 17 inches is just fine. And the reason I say this is because by the time you reach the main fabric, you don't want your lining piece showing on that when it's too long. So keeping it about 15 inches ensures that this does not happen. So even when it's it doesn't show under so i don't know how i made the mistake that i made guys but you must remember to use your main fabric as a template and in your case i expect that your main fabric has been slashed and spread so it's a bit more wide than mine so guys i'll see if i'm able to show you how to make a rouge skirt and i'll you know show the corrections in that skirt possibly after this video series and you guys can see what to do but for now you guys already know the drill mark out your dart and then go ahead and sew the dart on the skirt pieces including the front and the back pieces. After sewing the dart on all the pieces, here's what the dart looks like. Like I said, yours might not have a dart if you basically follow the new method and you close up the dart area completely. But here's what the dart looks like. And for the back piece, you'll notice that I didn't sew the center back together and that's absolutely intentional. So go ahead and grab your four strips that I said. I remember I said that the strips are about one and a half inches by 45 inches and these strips go at the side and they are you know help you to achieve the routine that you want so if you don't know how to pipe all you need to do is fold in half an inch by the side another small part also and then fold it over just like i've shown you so go ahead and pipe all the pieces and after piping this is what they look like i have four strips that have all been piped and they are really long Like I said earlier, I haven't sewn the center back and that's absolutely intentional. So go ahead and pin the center back in place so that you can keep them together and then go ahead and hem the pieces. I want to hem by folding half an inch and then one inch, but you can hem whichever way you feel best for you. But like I said, I recommend hemming half an inch and then one inch. So go ahead and hem the front piece of the main fabric as well as the back pieces of the main fabric. After hemming the skirt pieces, here's what they look like and you know they look really nice if I can say so myself. So the next thing to do will be to join the sides and to do that all you need to do is just place the pieces on each other so that the right sides are facing each other. So as you can see, I placed my back piece on the table with the right side facing up and then I went ahead to place the front piece on it so that the right sides are facing each other at this point. Go ahead and pin the sides together and mark out the sewing allowance of one and a half inches. Now I keep saying that the side seam sewing allowance I recommend is one and a half inches and that's because you need some space to do the reaching column after. So go ahead and pin it in place and mark out the sewing allowance and go ahead and sew it in place. You need to repeat this on the other side of the skirt as well.
after sewing the sides on one and a half inches here's what it looks like and you'll notice that i started joining from the hem area so that i could have my hem meeting properly the next thing to do is to iron our seam allowance open so you basically want to iron it so that it's as flat as possible After ironing the seam allowance, here's what it looks like and as you can see, it's flatter and easier for me to bend. So the only reason why I'm hemming the seam allowance right now is for me to make the column so that we can insert the strips and then do the ruching. So basically, you will need to make a column for the ruching and what you want to do is you basically just want to hem the allowance and make sure you're doing it you know, flat because whatever it is that you sew will show on the right side. So it needs to be done properly. So go ahead and hem the allowance all the way on both sides to the left and the right all the way to the bottom so you start from the waist and hem it or pin it in place all the way to the hem and you need to repeat this on the other side as well After folding the sewing allowance and pinning it in place, the next thing to do will be to sew it in place. You need to do this carefully because you must remember that whatever it is that you sew on the wrong side would show on the right side. So this needs to be done as neatly and as carefully as possible. You must remember to do this on the other side as well. After sewing it in place, here's what it looks like and as you can see, I tried as much as possible to keep it as neat as possible and it looks nice on the right side as well as on the wrong side. So the next thing for us to do is for us to insert the strips. I remember that we have four strips. So depending on how easy it is for you, you can start inserting from the hem or inserting from the waist. I tried inserting from the waist and it didn't work out well, so I decided to start inserting from the hem. So basically we have four strips and we have four columns, so each strip goes into one column. So we're going to go ahead and insert from the hem until it gets to the waist area. When it gets to the waist area, you'll need to carefully take away the safety pin and then pin the strip in place so that it doesn't move. So keep doing this until you've done all four strips. After carefully passing all the strips into their various columns, I ask that we use a pin to keep them in place. So at this point, it's now time for us to tack or sew them in place by running a few stitches over them so that they don't move. So we're going to go ahead and do that and then take out all the pins that we've used to hold them in place. At this point, we would also need to sort out the center back area. So go ahead and pin the center back area all the way from top to bottom and then you want to go ahead and mark nine inches from the waist area so nine inches that you're marking vertically from the waist area will be for the zipper allowance so you want to go ahead and mark that in place and then from that nine inches mark you want to go ahead and mark one and a half inches all the way down to the hem and this will be sewn all the way down so you basically sew from that nine inches mark all the way down to the hem At this point, the skirt piece is nearly done and this is what it looks like. So right now we have our ruching by the side and by the time I squeeze it in place, here's what it looks like. And as you can see, it actually does nicely and it forms nicely but because it's not on her, it was a bit too tight for her but if it was someone smaller, it would have been nice. So guys, the next thing to do for us to finish up the skirt, um, the lining pieces and we've gone ahead to do the dad. So for this one, we can go ahead and sort out the um, center back area and like I said, you need to leave nice inches first away for the zipper and then sew the rest in place so i've gone ahead to do that now and the next thing for us to do will be to sew the sides together so go ahead and open up the pieces place the front on the back piece so that the right sides are facing each other and then go ahead and sew the sides in place
after sewing the sides in place on a one and a half inches sewing allowance this is what it looks like and you'll notice that when i had to also hem the skirt so at this point we are almost done and this is what the pieces look like if you feel like the strings are too long for your skirt you can go ahead and cut out the excess strings and you can tie it in place just to give it a neat appearance but at this point we are moving on to the bodice pieces so to sort out the bodice piece the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be closing the shoulder dart and to close the shoulder dart is absolutely easy so i'm going to prepare myself and cut up some paper tape that i'll be needing Now looking at the photo or the picture that we're trying to replicate, you'll notice that there's no shoulder dart. So that's the actual reason why we're closing the shoulder dart. Drawing our pattern gives us a shoulder dart and a waist dart, but we actually only need a waist dart for this. So to close the shoulder dart, what you need to do is you'll need to use the slash and spread method again. So the first thing to do will be to slash the middle dart line on the waistline up to the bust points, just like I've done. And then after doing that, you will close the shoulder dart so making you close your shoulder dart like i'm doing right now you'll notice that the waist that opens up a bit more and becomes wider so basically kind of the same thing that you know we did when it came to the skirt so go ahead and close the shoulder dart completely and that you'll see that the shoulder dart has now migrated towards the waist dart this is something called dart manipulation and if you guys want me to go into it in details let me know in the comment section below and i'll do a series on dart manipulation but you have to be a pattern maker to properly understand that ma that manipulation rather so go ahead and reshape the new waist dart and what i do is i just place a piece of paper underneath the waist dart and then with my paper type paper tape rather i go ahead and glue the waist dart in position so basically now we have a wider waist dart so i'm going to need to reshape it after sticking the waist dart to another piece of paper we're going to go ahead and reshape it and the essence or the purpose of reshaping is is just so that we can get the actual shape that we need so go ahead and close the waist dart by folding the longer line on the other one so you can measure it and see which line is longer and then just fold it over after doing that you will need to reshape with the tracing wheel which is what i'm doing right about now and then cut off all the excess that you might have that you don't need you must cut along the lines of the tracing wheel as well so you have that pointed shape towards the dart area so at this point now we have done that with the waist dart we have closed the shoulder dart and transferred it towards the waist dart so that's what we have so for the back dart what we're going to do is eliminate the back dart which is another simple procedure the back dart value is one and a half centimeters i've gone ahead to measure that towards the shoulder area and then i'm going ahead to remeasure my shoulder so that i'm cutting off the dart around the shoulder and erasing the actual dart because i've transferred it at this point so again, this is another method of dart manipulation. And if you'd like me to teach you guys, let me know. It might be a paid class or not, and it just might be an introductory series, but just let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. Moving on to the bodice piece, the first thing to do is to determine how wide you want the shoulders. So whether you want your shoulders to be three inches or three and a half inches, you need to mark that. But you must see that from the style, the shoulders are not so narrow. So I've gone ahead to mark three and a half inches for the shoulders, I believe. And I've also gone ahead to drop the neckline by an extra one inch. And this is because looking at the style, you see that the neckline is not so low and the shoulders are not so narrow. So after doing that, I've gone ahead to draw my new neckline and as you can see, I'm showing you what it looks like on the actual style that we're trying to recreate. The next thing for us is for us to draw the keyhole. And you can see that that line is the bust point line, but we don't want it to get that low because my sister doesn't want hers that low. So for the keyhole, because we're working with half of the pattern, which is just half of the body, you can only just draw half of the keyhole so you don't need to draw the whole circle so whether you want yours deep or longer or wider that's entirely up to you if you want yours longer or deeper you can go ahead and take it down and make it up until the center bust or the bust point area and if you want yours wider you can go ahead and make it wider but that's entirely up to you my sister wanted hers as minimal as possible and that's why we stuck with something this small go ahead and cut out the keyhole area and then cut out the neckline as well. 
Moving on to the back piece, the first thing you need to do is also mark the new shoulder and starting from the shoulder edge, you want to mark the same value you marked on the front. So on the front, I marked three inches. I've gone ahead to mark three inches and also lower the neck by one and a half inches. So I've gone ahead to draw in my new neckline and that's basically all I'm doing for the back piece. So at this point, my pattern pieces are now done. I've got my front piece and my back piece. I'm going to put the back piece aside for a second and we're going to start with the front piece. To cut out the front piece, go ahead and fold the re required fabric into two just like I'm doing right now. You want to make sure that you folded it so that the right side is inside and the wrong side is outside. Then you want to go ahead and pin the front piece onto it, making sure the center front area aligns. So as you can see, the center front area before the keyhole or after the keyhole aligns with the fabric as well as the one after the keyhole so basically you want to go ahead and pin it in place just like i'm doing right now and then mark out the sewing allowances all around the sewing allowance you need around the waist area is half an inch around the side seam area is one and a half inches around the armhole area is half an inch around the shoulder area is half an inch around the neckline area is half an inch and around the keyhole area is about one centimeters but you can leave half an inch and then trim it off later which is exactly what i did so after marking out this you can go ahead and cut it out and then cut out the lining using the main fabric as a template as well You would also need to cut out the back piece so basically you want to pin the back piece onto the fabric making sure you leave space for the sewing allowance or the um, zipper allowance in this case so i've gone ahead to pin the back piece onto the fabric mark out the zipper allowance of one and a half inches the side seam allowance of one and a half inches and the other allowances of half an inch everywhere else afterwards you want to go ahead and cut out the back piece as shown Cut out the lining pieces using the main fabric pieces as a template so you want to make sure that the center front aligns because it's very important you don't want the lining being slightly larger or slightly smaller than the main fabric so it's very important that you pin as much as possible and as firm as possible. After cutting out the main fabric as well as the lining piece, it's now time for us to mark our dart. So you guys know how we mark the dart. We notch the dart at the edge and also put a pin through where the dart is supposed to be. Now for the bust point or for the bust point dart, you do not mark the dart exactly at the bust point because you don't want it protruding. From the dart bust point or bust point mark, you need to go lower by one and a half centimeters and start marking your dart from that point. That's exactly where you sew your dart up to and that way you will have avoid any protruding around the bust point area. After sewing the dart, you'll notice that I started sewing about one and a half centimeters below the first mark and that's because like I said, you don't want it protruding. So the next thing for us to do will be to sort out the keyhole. 
To sort out the keyhole or when it comes to any tricky part in sewing, the trick I like to do is I like to place the fabric as it should be. So in this case, I've placed the lining so that the right side is facing the table and I've also placed the main fabric on the lining so that the right side is facing up. Now I'll go ahead and pin the center of the keyhole. So I'm just keep and pinning the pieces together while the wrong sides are facing each other, just like I'm doing right about now. Afterwards, I'm going to go ahead and gently fold in the main fabric and as well as the lining piece because that's how it should be when I've sewn it. So as you can see, I'm just pinching the main fabric in gently. So you gently want to fold in the main fabric and then you also want to fold in the lining fabric so that they meet together and then you want to hold it in place just like I'm doing right now flip it over or flip one piece over to the wrong side and then you can now pin that in place because it's such a small circle it will be a bit tricky so you have to work in halves and halves so you want to sew one half first and then go back and sew the other half so starting from the point where you pinned it's now easy for you to pin your way all through so you can take away the pin that you have on the right side and then just pin from one half of the circle up onto the other half of the circle now you want to make make sure that the center points are notched and are in place properly as you can see i have to start mine again from the center point and then repin it so that i don't have any excess on any of the pieces after i'm satisfied with the pinning on one half of the fabric i went ahead to sew it so at this point i'm sorry my camera is not really in focus i didn't realize it but this is what it looks like after pinning anyway so i'm going to go ahead and sew this half as much as possible and then after sewing this half i'll come back after sewing this half of the keyhole here's what it looks like so it's now time for us to sew the other half and the same method would you know work so now on the right side here's what it looks like and it's not perfect yet however it's not been notched or ironed so go ahead and flip over to the other side starting from the point where you see the last thread and pin it in place and sew it in place so at this point i've gone ahead to sew the whole thing and this is what it looks like with your pair of snips Go ahead and notch it in place all around. So you want to notch it as close as possible to the thread without cutting through the thread. After notching it in place, it will sit properly and then you can go ahead and give it a good iron and your keyhole will be finished. After notching it without ironing yet, here's what it looks like. And as you can see, it sits better already. So guys, I forgot to apologize for the hideous color of lining that I used. Guys, I searched everywhere and I didn't find the exact color of lining. So I just had to make do with this one. Anyway, so go ahead and give this a good iron. And by the time you do that, it will sit really nicely. After ironing the keyhole, you agree with me that it sits really nice and it looks really clean. So at this point guys, we're going to pause this video and pick it up next week. I feel like this video has been very information packed so let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Alright guys, we've come to the very end of this video. Thank you so much for sticking with me to the very end. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it was worth your while. Like I said, this particular video will be finished next week. So if you haven't already turned on your notification bell, don't forget to do that. If you've not subscribed, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the like button so that the YouTube algorithm knows that you enjoyed this video and will suggest similar videos from me to you guys. If you haven't already left a comment, please leave your comment suggestions and feedback in the comment section below low you guys know how much i love to read from you and i'll definitely respond and if you like me to see if you like me to make the rich skirt that i talked about let me know in the comment section below i look forward to reading from you guys and i'll definitely make it if i get enough comments telling me that they want me to make it all right guys till next week please stay safe and don't forget that i love you thank you and i'll see you in my next video next week bye